It has been 16 years with your wife, and there is still no male heir. I am well aware of this fact. Is there anything you propose? I do. Well, then tell me. I don't have all day. There are many other women who are bound to be more fertile, who wouldn't hesitate to give you an heir. What if you took another woman to be queen? And what of my wife and daughter? I am well aware this goes against the rules of the Lord, but have you ever considered an annulment? Seeing as Catherine was formally married to your late brother, we could declare your marriage invalid by Levitical law. Princess Mary will immediately become a bastard. So you will no longer have to worry about her. And Queen Catherine will be out of your life for good. The Pope would never permit it. You are the King of England and Wales, Your Majesty. He will surely make an exception for you. Very well. I will end my marriage with Catherine of Aragon, and I will not stop until that brat of a princess is declared a bastard. You are dismissed. Please come with me, Your Highness. Welcome to the castle of Thornbury, your highness. Alice, what was my father's reason for sending me here? All I know is that your father is planning something. All the information that I was given is that you are to stay here and be the Princess of Wales until he is said otherwise. He's planning to dissolve his union with my mother? His majesty may try all he likes, but the Lord and the Pope will never permit it. But I'm still not a boy, Alice. He will do everything in his power to remove me from the line of succession. No matter what His Majesty says, you will always be a princess to me, Your Highness. No, you have it wrong. No matter what my father claims, I will still manage to claim the throne. Your Highness? Come in. Your Highness, a letter from His Majesty's advisor has arrived. I fear the Lord has let this divorce be complete. To Her Highness, the Lady Mary, with a heavy heart, I, Thomas Wolsey, by the grace of God, Cardinal of York and Lord Chancellor of England, write to you on a matter of grave importance. By the King's decree, acting with the full blessing of Almighty God, your mother, Catherine of Aragon, is no longer Queen of England. This follows the annulment of their union, deemed an unholy alliance by the divine will itself. The king, in his boundless wisdom, has secured a new union with the most pious Anne Boleyn. His majesty demands that you return immediately to Westminster Palace to serve as lady-in-waiting to his newborn daughter, the fair Princess Elizabeth. I shall return to England immediately to see my father in this painted-faced whore he calls his new wife. Lady Mary, you may not speak of Her Majesty in that way. The only being I will accept as Queen is my mother, or better yet, me. I will offer graciously to be Lady-in-waiting to this new bastard child of Henry's, work my way into his good graces, and then, good Lord willing, get what is rightfully mine. Now, please gather my things and prepare a carriage for England. Enter. Your Majesty. Rise, rise. You look well. Thank you, Your Majesty. Please, sit. Mary, you have served the crown well as lady-in-waiting to young Elizabeth. Tell me, how fares Elizabeth? Still defiant, I imagine? 
She is spirited, your majesty. Mary, I must speak frankly. Anne, she disappoints me. Her beauty, once a flame, now flickers like a dying candle. The years take their toll on all of us, your majesty. More than that, she has failed in her most basic duty, Mary, to provide a son, a son to secure the Tudor legacy. Perhaps God's will. God's will be damned. She withholds herself from me, pleads illness. Maybe there's another reason. Another man warming her sheets, perhaps. Surely not, your majesty. And what if there were? What if her indiscretions ran deeper? What if the rumors about her past with her own brother were true? Incest, adultery, these are accusations that could shake the very foundation of the crown. These are grave matters, your majesty. One should not speak of them lightly. No, not lightly, but perhaps decisively. You may go. You, Queen Anne Boleyn of England and Wales, have been sentenced to death in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To Jesus Christ, I command my soul, or Jesus, receive my soul. Mary, the council worries as I grow old and near the end of my days. Edward is good boy, but he's young. Too young to face the viper circling my throne. Ooh. The council serves your majesty faithfully, I am sure. <laughs> Faithful to their own ambitions, perhaps. Northumberland, that snake. Whispers of alliances with the Seymours. They would have Jane Grey on the throne before the ink on my final decree dries. I am old, Mary. God may not will me to have more children. The Tudor line cannot be extinguished. England needs a true heir. Edward is your heir, your majesty. He will be a great king. But what if misfortune befell him before he could secure the throne? There needs to be a safeguard, Mary, a guarantee of the Tudor legacy. Your Majesty, the act of succession could be revised. Yes, of course. Why didn't I think of this before? The act can be changed if the will of the people is clear. You, my daughter, are of true Tudor blood a testament to the strength of our dynasty. A new act naming you next in line after Edward. It would silence the vipers and ensure the Tudor legacy. A new act. The people would need convincing, your majesty, but for the sake of the realm, for the continuation of your glorious reign. Excellent, Mary. We shall draft the proclamation together and let England know who shall safeguard their future. It is God's will. Of England, cast your attention upon me. 
thank you. My brother, the former King of England, Edward VI, has attempted to replace me with our Protestant cousin, Lady Jane Grey. I know that you fellow Catholics feel the same as me. We will not stand to have another Protestant destroy our country. <laughs> then let us take back England and bring the person who should truly rule to the throne. Lady Mary, what are you doing? Please rise for Mary of England and Wales, your new 